This is Gabe Cook with Debate Kansas City, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a December file release that Debate Kansas City is putting out. Most of it pertains to how the recent tensions between South Korea, North Korea, and the United States affect the debate topic. So the file will be important for both policy debaters and congressional debaters who do debates over our military presence bills. Uh, the biggest piece of the file is a new Japan counterplan that I think will be really sweet for the negative. What I'm going to do is talk about the situation in Korea in general, kind of give an overview and an update. Then I'm going to go through and talk about the file. All right, so let's talk about the situation between North Korea and South Korea. As you hopefully know, North Korea and South Korea are essentially still at war. They just agreed at the end of the Korean War in the 1950s to lay down their arms. Both sides have a ton of troops right at the border. The United States also has 25,000 troops stationed in South Korea. It's known as one of the biggest hot spots in the world. And beginning this May, tensions have escalated. You see, in May, North Korea shot down a South Korean ship. And that obviously made folks in the United States and South Korea very upset. Then, just about a week ago, North Korea fired on a small island in South Korea, killing four people and destroying thousands of homes. North Korea said they were pro provoked. The United States and South Korea said that's not true at all. We were doing military exercises. There was no, re no reason to shoot at us. These weren't real um, you know, acts of aggression by the United States and South Korea. They were typical war games. And what is true is that the United States and South Korean army plan and routinely put on war games right by the Korean border. And these war demonstrations are there to show North Korea that the United States and South Korea have more advanced technology and that North Korea is not going to want to get tangled up and do a war between the United States and South Korea. That's what those exercises are meant to demonstrate. Now. North Korea has been known as an unstable regime for a long time, led by Kim Jong-il, a guy that most people think is a little crazy. Uh, but Kim Jong-il is actually ill at the moment, and there's a power transition occurring. Uh, his 27-year-old relative is going to be taking over the country. And a lot of people think that the reason North Korea shot down this boat and now fired on an island in South Korea is because there's a power transition and the new leader wants to show that he's tough and wants to prove to his people that he's tough. Uh, other people think that it's a game by North Korea called brinksmanship. And what they do is they escalate tension and then they say, okay, we'll play nice if you give us stuff, if you give us some aid or some fuel or some food or, or, or whatever they might want. So a lot of people think that North Korea is just testing people, playing a game of brinksmanship in order to get what they want. Other people think that the North Koreans might actually be crazy enough to start a war. So that's a little bit of the background. Let's talk about the file. The first section of the file deals with Korea. It's got some evidence about escalating tension, some impacts about what would happen if there was a war, and some evidence that says that really there's not going to be a war. This is what we call saber rattling or brinksmanship. North Korea makes some noise to try to get some goodies, but in reality they know that if there was a war, that things would not end well for them. All right, so the next section of the file is kind of the major argument that comes out of this file. It is the China counter plan. So to understand the China counter plan, here's a little more background on the situation. In the Korean War, the Chinese took the side of the North, the US took the side of the South. Ever since that war ended, they haven't been able to reunify. Uh, the North is kind of a, a dictatorship and it's closer to the kind of government that China has. South Korea has a democracy and is certainly the kind of government that the United States has. Now, China has never come down too terribly hard on North Korea, and part of the reason many people suggest is because China likes North Korea being anti-US and being a little nutty. They don't want the United States to be good buds with a unified Korea where US troops might be present because Korea is right on China's border and it would be um, a process of encirclement. This is something China fears. They fear being encircled by the United States because it means the United States would have a lot more power in the region and in the world. But if one country could fix everything that's going on in Korea right now, it is China. China provides North Korea 80 to 90% of their food and of their fuel. 
So if China were to go to North Korea and say, you need to give up your nuclear program or we're going to cut you off, it would work. Tensions would go down and North Korea would have to follow the lead of China. China hasn't done this, most people say, because they like to keep North Korea as an enemy of the United States in a nice little buffer so that they don't feel quite as encircled. So here's what the counter plan does. It has China do something that most people say China will never do, which is threaten to cut off North Korea's food and fuel unless they take real steps to give up their nuclear program. Now, what that counter plan would do in the type of cases that it might be able to help to defeat is it would create stability in Korea. So if there's a team running the South Korea affirmative, most likely they're going to reduce troops, and they'll say that if the U.S. reduces troops, it will, do, it will reduce tension. The counter plan will say, that's not true. China is the only country that can fix this situation in Korea. If China acts, it will solve for your affirmative case. And then the counter plan will argue that reducing U.S. troops in Korea would be a really bad idea because that would reduce our influence. On the other hand, if China goes in and tells North Korea to give up its nuclear program, which is exactly what the United States wants it to do, that will give the United States a great deal more power. China would be giving up to a degree its buffer zone uh, with North Korea. It would be acquiescing to American power. So the counter plan argues that we should not reduce troops, we should keep troops where they are, and China should go and fix the North Korean problem. If this were to happen, the United States would suddenly have more power in Asia, it would look like a more effective world leader, and the net benefit of the counter plan is increased U.S. hegemony. The argument also could work against a Japan affirmative. The troops that we have in Japan are seen as critical to help if there was any kind of conflict between North and South Korea. They're also seen as critical in helping to encircle China. So if someone is running the Japan Affirmative, you could run this China counter plan and you could say that if China takes this action, it will create stability over in North Korea. And then you will argue that if the U.S. were to reduce troops um, in Japan, that it would really hurt U.S. power in terms of the situation between North and South Korea and in terms of encircling China. Uh, the team running the Japan Affirmative is still going to argue, well, you know, these troops are bad for all the reasons they could potentially argue, right? For example, the debate Kansas City Novice Affirmative says there's noise pollution and, and all these other issues. There's, you know, prostitution and abuse of women, all these terrible things the troops are doing. You would still have to answer those arguments. But you would argue that your counter plan, combined with a rejection of the affirmative, would increase U.S. hegemony and stability in a region that is highly unstable right now. And you would argue that achieving that is far more important than dealing with these minimal problems that the troops cause. Or at least, you know, you're going to argue they're minimal because that's your job in the debate round. So, you could run the China counter plan against pretty much any team running a South Korean affirmative and you should be able to run it against any team running a Japan affirmative and what it will do is it will give you a great hegemony net benefit you just have to win the argument that any troop reduction in Japan right now would do a disservice to US hegemony and if you win that you have a really good argument in the debate round I think uh, finally the file has an update over the situation in Japan and after this flare-up with North Korea and with some increased adventurism by China out in some sea lanes, they've, they've had more ships be more aggressive recently, uh, suddenly Japan is saying, you know what, we really want to keep U.S. troops in Okinawa. Uh, and we really need to keep this Futima base. In fact, some of the evidence um, even references a defense ministry white paper that came out in Japan not too long ago that says U.S. troops in Futima are critical and that they need to stay in the locations the United States wants them to stay. So this evidence says that if we did what most affirmatives say and get rid of the Futima base, that it would really hurt our ability to prevent conflict in North Korea and it would prevent our ability to stop China. Um, there's also some evidence that says the opposite a little bit that says, you know what, this Futima issue is still hurting the U.S. and Japan and we should get rid of the troops and the people are suffering. There's evidence that makes that point as well. But with this new escalated tension, the evidence is starting to swing the other way. All right, so I hope that there's enough good information in there. There's kind of a lot going on and a lot going on in this file. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you dig in and get on top of this issue, it could really help you at this point in the season. 
It's Gabe Cook with DKC. Take care.